Welcome back to another episode of the Upgrade My Classroom podcast. My name is Kevin McKellar, the host, and this is the show where we teach proactive mental health and personal development strategies for teens. So teachers and educators and administrators and guidance counselors, and anybody can come listen to the show and learn a few things and go make an upgrade in their classroom for the betterment of our teens regarding their social, emotional, and mental health. Um, I Today, I want to discuss a topic that has it, it shines its light uh, in many different facets of our culture today and it's the blame game and I want to tell you how it kind of came to be so I was um, listening to a you know when I work out in the morning sometimes I'll pop on some music sometimes I'll, I'll leave like a YouTube video playing in the audio in the background or something like that and today I very rarely listen to I don't think I've really ever listened to Jocko Willink um, if you don't know Jocko Willink he's like this superstar Navy Steel incredible military dude um, I clearly don't know his actual rank and all that stuff but he's like I mean he just like eats steel for breakfast type of guy you know um, and is huge a huge proponent of uh, ownership and discipline and um, you know getting after it and all that stuff and the reason why I never really got into him is because I had my own personal breakthrough many many years ago before I he really I think even before he was kind of had a name to himself um, so I did that work through other people um, earlier on in my life. I did that work through the Tony Robbins and the Tim Ferriss and, uh, you know, uh, just other other guys like that, um, that now I'm in a place where if I'm watching some videos and listening to some things, I'm specifically looking for like certain strategies maybe to grow the business or certain things for uh, building your routines or productivity or something like that. So I rarely listen to him, but I listened to the thumbnail kind of caught me today. So I put it on and I'm working out and and it was this right this person who commented something on either Jocko's latest video or whatever it was. And he left a comment saying something of the nature like, Hey, I found a flaw in you in your last episode. And already I'm like, Oh man, someone's calling out Jocko. Okay, let's see what he's got to say. Like, you don't understand what it's like coming from an undisciplined uh, family. You have zero idea of how hard it is. And this, this is the exact word, zero idea of how hard it is to, um, and now I'm, I'm kind of rambling, but like how to deal with undisciplined parents and coming from a, a place where we just, it did, wasn't a thing. Um, and goes on and on to talk about how Jocko doesn't understand. Jocko doesn't understand, R- you know, saying that, hey, I really want to fix this discipline issue or the lack thereof. But, you know, you just you got to give us you, you, uh, slack here. You don't get it. You don't understand. He's talking to this like Navy SEAL Superman guy. And right away, I look at Jocko's face and he's like. And he's kind of silent because it's exactly how I, it's exactly what I thought he was going to do. And, and you probably already know what I'm about to say. If you're taking the time to write a comment, first of all, writing a comment, a negative comment on anybody's post or, or video or episode is like the biggest, most saddest thing I've ever heard because that person is so broken. But either way, if you're taking that time, you're you're not taking any accountability. He goes on to say, Jocko goes on to say, like I, I, my parents weren't super disciplined. They had jobs and they did their thing and they just lived their life. Like it doesn't matter. Like you, there are people who come who are born to you know are cracked end babies who are you know um, born without any parents in their lives and they have every odd uh, stacked against them and they are 100% some of the most disciplined people we'll ever hear of and you have other people who come from extreme wealth and have every opportunity in available to them and they just flounder they don't really get it and they're just like whatever so either way it's all on you 
And that's where we come back to students this this uh, day and age. And I feel like it's not just kids. I feel like it's our society and everybody's pointing fingers. Everybody's trying to blame someone else. They're trying to blame the the president. They're trying to blame their, you know, their superintendent of their school district. They're trying to blame the teacher. They're trying to blame their mommy or their daddy. And no one's as Gary V says, you know, pointing the fingers, pointing the thumbs back at them and saying like, I'm in control. I'm in control of my life. I'm in control of my feelings and I'm in control of what I choose to do for the rest of my life. Every day I wake up and I have decisions in front of me. What am I going to do today? How am I going to think today? Who am I going to help today? So I think when it comes down to some ways that we can start to help our students is a, a few a few different ways. I think when a student is saying, you know, woe is me. I mean, I remember I did a talk um, actually at a uh, colleague's school of mine, uh, a friend, a colleague of mine um, at his school. And I had some time where I was setting up in his office and one of the girls, one of the students was there. Actually, it was like, I think a few of them and they're just hanging out. And the one girl was talking to me. She was saying, you know, I just don't, I don't know what I want to do at the school. And and I'm like, oh, okay, what do you think? And she's named a couple things. And, and she's like right away saying how, yeah, but I can't do that. And that's not fair because blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Okay. What do you want me to say? You just told me that I can't do this. Or you just told me that that's not fair because of whatever situation and it's not going to work out and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, there's nothing for me to say. So a lot of times when you approach things with w- without trying always to be the voice of reason and you would approach the situation just as you would if a stranger on the street came up to you and started just rambling their their uh woe is me story you would kind of just look at them and say okay you've given me no actual question you've given me no real details and then you've made a bunch of a bunch of excuses how can i possibly help you right? You're not looking at yourself and being accountable to yourself and saying, I need to do this or I want to do this. Um, Here are my obstacles. How can I overcome these obstacles? Well, that's a whole different question. That's a whole different story you just said to me. So, okay, well, let's get cracking. So when you approach it as like, yeah, I I can't help you. Sometimes they're taking, like kids are taken back. Like, oh, like, Okay. And sometimes that might end the conversation and they might, but if you can, before you let that student walk away, you can say, wait, wait, but wait, hold on. Like, do you understand why I can't help you and regain it there? But I think if you really approach it as you would a stranger on the street and kind of be real with them and saying like, I can't help you if you're not going to hold yourself accountable to your problems. Um, in the best way and the most, um, uh, you know, the best way to do that. Um, at the same time, I also think when you have an expectation, say in your classroom, if you're a teacher, you, you cannot break those expectations for anything. Now, this is a huge gray area because, as teachers now, we have so many people in our back pockets. We have our administrators, uh, you know, um, dangling the, the the strings and making the puppets work. We have the the taxpayers. We have the board of education. Like we have all these people who are, you know, pulling our strings. So there's sometimes things we have to do, and it's like, <sighs> but um, for the most part, as much as you can, we cannot break our our rules. Um, be, for for really anybody because um that is that's where we start to see okay well if Sally got away with this and I'm Johnny well I, I you know you let Sally get away with this so I I got to be I got to be able to get away with it too like what 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 the heck is that <clears throat> so I think that we have to be really strict on our policies in how we organize our classroom now I think this is not necessarily big issues like grading or attendance or disciplinary things. I think it's more about where, say, you know, phones or wearing hats or talking, whatever it is, right? 
we have to be 100%. And of course, you know this, if you pull out a consequence and say, you know, if you do not stop talking, you will be written up. And they say one more word, you have to write them up. Because that's how you establish the 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 authority in your classroom from day one. You know this, but I'm just telling you this, that <laughs> this is one of those things where Again, people are easy to be able to blame other situations if if <clears throat> there's an, a reason, another reason to blame other situations and other people. So just a few ways that I think that might help. Um, but I think it's a much bigger conversation. And I think at the same time also, um, you're, one last person I didn't talk about that is kind of pulling your strings is also the parents. Uh, maybe I've mentioned the parents, but either way, uh, taxpayers. So the parents too are also kind of pulling your string. So if, you know, a parent complains about something there's, and they really, really want to take it there, um, there's kind of only so much you can do, uh, depending on the situation. But, um, so, so if a parent is undermining you and your work and all that, then there's really, again, only so much you can do, but it, it just comes down to the situation where, you really need to work with your students to make sure that they know they are accountable to themselves and they are in control of their destiny. If they want to be more disciplined, they can work at getting more disciplined. It has nothing to do with their upbringing. It is abs- I mean, it's probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If they want to pass uh, their your class, they can pass your class. It's priorities, it's study habits, it's it's energy, it's focus, it's every, you know, all that, right? But it's up to them. It's 100% up to them. Yeah, but done. Yeah, but is the two words that it just, you already know where it's going. Stop, done. Maybe you could do that in your class. <laughs> just like, no, yeah, buts. That sounds terrible. Yeah, don't do that. Either way, that's it for today. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you're able to uh, think a little bit about how you might be able to help your students become a little bit more accountable to themselves. So if you liked today's episode, let me know by hitting like, hitting subscribe, and hitting the bell notification to be notified every time I release a new video. And if you like today's video, then you also might like this one right over here.